Hi, everyone, and welcome to our first video lecture of the semester. I'm going to use this video lecture to discuss the topic of learning loss and the pandemic, and also show you how you can access the diagnostic essay on our course site. So here you can see an overview of this video lecture. I will first show you how you can access the diagnostic essay and the accompanying, accompanying article on our Canvas site. Then I will briefly summarize the main points of that article, which is titled, Does it hurt children to measure pandemic learning loss? Finally, I will pose some questions for you to consider before writing your diagnostic essay. Here are some instructions on how to access the article as well as the diagnostic essay on Canvas. So what you want to do first is go to our Canvas home site. And from there, you'll go to the week one module, which is where you can open the article and also write your diagnostic essay. All right, so here is our Canvas homepage. So from here, you'll just scroll down and go to this link where you can view the assignments that are due this week. And then you'll go to week one. And this is where you'll see the link to the article as well as the diagnostic essay itself. So what I would like you to do first is to read the article and you can read it more than once if you would like. And you can click here to download the article. It can be downloaded as a PDF or if you like an alternative format, you can click here where it says alternative formats. And the article is about two pages. So like I mentioned, feel free to read it more than once. You can also print it out and annotate it by hand, or you can annotate it online. After you've read the article and you feel that you are ready to write on this topic, then you will go to the diagnostic essay. Keep in mind that the diagnostic essay is a timed essay and you will have only one attempt to complete it. And the total time given to you is 75 minutes. So when you're ready to start writing, make sure that you have 75 minutes available and you can work on the essay uninterrupted because you will not be able to attempt it more than once. Another thing to keep in mind is that this essay will not count towards your overall grade in the class. So it, it's not going to affect your grade in any way. I will mark these as complete or incomplete. And even though this essay will not be graded, I will be using these essays to get a sense of the writing skills in the class and also individual students' writing skills. And that knowledge really helps me in terms of planning the rest of our semester. It helps me know which skills I need to emphasize more in our class. And uh, it just gives me a better sense of you all as writers. So I would encourage you all to take the essay seriously, write it as you would a formal essay and just keep in mind that while it's not graded, it does help me um, better know how to structure this class for everyone. So as I noted, the essay is timed and you will be given one attempt to complete it. And I know that timed essays can make students a little nervous. So that's why I wanted to give you plenty of time to prep beforehand by watching this video lecture and also reading the article. So make sure to take advantage of that. <clears throat> okay, so in terms of the article itself, 
Does it hurt children to measure pandemic learning loss? What is discussed is this concept of learning loss. And I think it's important to define what that is first. Learning loss refers to gaps of knowledge, um, particularly in fundamental skills such as reading and math. And the article discusses how, for the most part, uh, almost every student has experienced some type of learning loss during the pandemic since their uh, schools went remote. And the article also points out that there are certain groups of students which have fallen behind even further than others. Students of color and students in low income communities are those that have suffered more learning loss than their peers. In terms of how learning loss is measured, for the most part, it is measured by standardized testing, which can be problematic. The article does discuss these issues with standardized testing. For one, standardized testing can stigmatize or discourage children and their families, particularly those who have fallen behind more than others. The article begins with a mother discussing her experience, helping her two kids um, learn remotely at home and also working herself. And she talks about how much time and effort she has put into helping her kids with their online learning. And despite all this, one of her son's teachers informs her that he has still fallen behind in terms of his reading. And getting that news is very discouraging for her. She even says that it's offensive for the teacher to tell her that her son is still behind. And when the progress of students is measured by these standardized tests, the, the result can be that certain students and their families uh, feel very discouraged because they may be trying their best at home, but according to the standardized tests, the students still are not learning what they should be. Additionally, the article points out that standardized testing is problematic because smaller groups of students are being tested. There are not as many students that are returning to their schools for in-person standardized testing. So one complaint that parents have is that the results are inaccurate. Finally, the article mentions that standardized testing does not measure other things that students have learned outside the classroom. So for instance, these real life issues that students have been experiencing firsthand as a result of the pandemic um, are not going to be measured by a standardized test. And this could be knowledge that is just as important as what they're learning in school. And the article gives a couple of examples about these real life issues. For instance, racism, we have seen a lot of um, movements and protests in terms of how certain groups have been treated, not just during the pandemic, but even before then. Um, for instance, if you think of the Black Lives Matter movement and all of the um, protests that we saw uh, to go with that movement, and these are important lessons that students are learning in real time, and the article mentions this knowledge um, is very valuable, but it's not something that's going to be measured by standardized tests. Additionally, students are able to see firsthand the government's response to this pandemic and to think about and discuss with those around them how effective that response has been and whether or not it could have been much better. The issues of standardized testing aside, the research that is discussed in the article does show overall that students are struggling. And the um, research that found this isn't just standardized testing, but different types of studies 
they all seem to paint the same picture and that is students are experiencing learning loss to some extent. On this slide, I have an example from the article. So in terms of reading, which is seen as a fundamental skill for all students, one of the studies found that for second graders, 26% of them were behind in terms of their reading level and 33% of third graders. And while all the studies seem to agree that students are struggling, it's not clear why learning loss is occurring. And there seem to be numerous factors that are contributing to that. So one is remote learning in itself and the quality of instruction that students are getting at home. So if a student is not getting good quality instruction, if they don't have teachers who are teaching online effectively, then of course they're going to experience some type of learning loss. Additionally, there are issues in students' home life that could be contributing to their learning loss. So for instance, uh, we have seen a lot of people lose their job during the pandemic. And if a student has a parent or someone in their household who has lost their job, then that's going to impact their ability to do well in school. Um, job loss can lead to all sorts of other issues such as housing instability. And these are things that are going to affect a student's performance. Finally, lack of reliable childcare has been an issue with several people. And this is going to impact how well students do with remote learning because they may not have someone who is able to help them with remote learning at home. Um, if they have a parent who has to work and there's no one that is available to help the student, and they're sort of on their own, then of course they're going to struggle. On the flip side, if you have a parent who is working from home, but has to watch multiple kids and help multiple um, children with their online learning while they're also trying to work remotely themselves, then that can impact students as well. So after discussing this idea of learning loss and what students have experienced during the pandemic, the article shifts to solutions and looks at how students can catch up. And one of the solutions that's proposed in the article is by providing extra academic support for students such as tutoring. The article also mentions it's important to support students emotionally, especially if they've experienced any of the issues that I mentioned on the previous slide. So now in terms of questions to consider for your own writing, these are questions that can be used to generate ideas and just to help you brainstorm. They do not need to necessarily all be addressed in your essay, although you're welcome to address any of these. And before you begin writing, it's not a bad idea to think about these questions and what your response would be to each one of them. So one of the most important things to consider, especially because you are going to be writing from your perspective, is do you feel that you yourself or others you know have experienced learning loss during this pandemic? And if so, what has that looked like? What do you feel you did not learn online that you would have otherwise learned in a classroom? Do you think the age of students um, has made a difference in terms of learning loss? So in other words, is it more likely to affect younger students or older students? Or do all students experience some form of it and it just, the learning loss that they experience depends on what it is they're learning at their age. Next, you may wanna think about if there have been things you learned this year you would have not learned otherwise if this were a quote unquote normal year. 
and how valuable you feel that knowledge is. Finally, if you have experienced learning loss, what should schools response be? How can schools help students catch up? And you can think about this, not just in terms of the high school that you came from, but also colleges and universities. So in other words, how can Cal State Northridge help our incoming freshmen who may have experienced learning loss this past year or two and now are entering their first year of college? Okay, so that pretty much covers this video lecture. Uh, like I mentioned, you do want to take your time before you begin writing and prep as much as possible. You can read the article more than once. You can review this video lecture again. And once you feel you're ready to write, go ahead and get started. So best of luck to everyone with your diagnostic essay. And if you have any questions, feel free to reach out.